But I, after considering all of the aspects that, uh, to uh, this case, and talking with these people that uh, study the prisoners, and uh, knowing that the purpose of a uh, prison is to rehabilitate as well as punish, I felt that no further good could be served society by keeping Julius Bohan in, in prison. And after he had worked out a satisfactory work program with a uh, veterinary hospital near Dallas, I felt that he should be released. Now, I might say my first impulse was to keep him in the prison. Had I made a decision two months ago, that's probably what I would have done, is turn him down. But after taking time to study it over and gather additional information, I convinced myself that he should be released. Did you receive any correspondence in favor of the parole? Not a single letter in favor of letting him out. Every letter that I've received, and every petition has been against releasing him from prison. But I felt that those people who sent me the letters and the petitions uh, didn't have access to all of the information that I have had. And of course I know that it's hard for the friends and relatives of the people that he murdered to ever uh, feel that he should uh, be released from prison. But I feel that I have done the right thing, I have signed it, and the man will be released within a few hours. Mr. Duncan, what immediate effect will this decision have upon the certificate holders and the company in general, the corporation in general? The thing they probably want to hear most of all is the fact that we now will be able to pay the 6% that we've been promising for a number of months. We will have to wait and see that, that the opposition is not going to take an appeal to the Supreme Court of the United States. But once it's been determined that no appeal will be taken, and it'll be a matter of just a few days in getting the checks actually into the mail. Now the next thing of importance to the certificate holders is the fact that this will probably result in a favorable decision on all of our tax uh, problem. We had already won a favorable decision up through the year 1956, and with the circuit court saying that Judge Chandler was right in all respects in his holdings, uh, it looks to me like the Treasury Department will now agree that we should have the same uh, decision with respect to 1957 and future years. How about the possibility of reorganization? Well, Judge Chandler anticipated this result, and uh, we set up a timetable already that uh, uh, can't be speeded up. This decision will not make us move any faster because we already uh, my report to the certificate holders will go out this week, and that's the trustee's report which is required prior to a plan of reorganization being submitted. And then the, at the same time, the certificate holders will be asked to send in suggestions for a reorganization. They have till October the 31st to do that. And then I have until November the 15th to submit a plan of reorganization or tell the court why none is feasible.
First of all, I have fulfilled my duty to the best of my ability to manage and operate the county attorney's office. I've been in constant contact with that office while out of Tulsa and in Tulsa practically every day in the county attorney's office supervising the management of the office. It seems particularly ridiculous to me that the Republicans would say something about this. When they have as a candidate for president of the United States a man who has been out of his office campaigning for four years for the presidency and has two more years to go in continuing his campaign, and I'm referring to Vice President Nixon. I think also that it's ridiculous because the Republican candidate for governor served three terms in Congress, and each time he ran for re-election, he was away from his office campaigning for re-election. And I submit a man who has a record of less than half attendances to roll calls in Congress, in other words, who missed more than half of the bills voted on when he was a member of Congress. The Republican candidate for governor has no room to criticize my position in this campaign. This is the OTCX-1 Circa Foil spacecraft. And what is its purpose? Its purpose is true space flight, man. We plan to take it to the moon and return. So when are you going to leave, sir? We have set the date of December the 7th, 1959, wherein myself, Major Wayne Aho, retired, and a third party not yet selected will take off for the moon and return. And you're going to leave from where? Uh, from Space, Maryland. That Space is Space, Maryland. That is the area of real estate wherein this craft will be fabricated, and we have obtained the name of space for it. Uh, who's building it? Uh, it will be the OTC Enterprises Incorporated, and I am the head of them, and the fabrication will be done by various contractors. We offered the Defense Department in a written signed statement that we would deliver one of these crafts to them cost free. What was their answer? Uh, they found no value in our offer. The tone of the letter said that they had no further interest in the proposal.